Okay, so let's discuss now the different types of research. Descriptive versus analytical or explanatory. Descriptive research includes surveys and fact finding inquiries of different kinds. The major purpose of descriptive research is the present description of the state. Ex post facto research in social science and businesses is used for descriptive research studies. It's just the same, but they're using different terms. The main point of this method is that the researcher has no control over the variables. He can only report what has happened or what is happening. The previous examples I showed you are example of descriptive research. They did not intervene. They just record what they have observed and they reported. The researcher holds no control over the variables. Rather, they only report. On the contrary, in analytical research, the researcher has to use facts or information that are that are already available and makes analysis and critical evaluation of the material. For example, in in chemical properties in chemistry, there are many different chemical properties such as valence electron, um, what we call this one, the number of atomic number, atomic number, the number of protons, number of neutrons. We have also the boiling point, the freezing point, the conductivity, the resistivity. These informations are already available. And what if you want to see the pattern? What if what if there is an association between valence electron numbers and conductivity, right? What if an atom which has more valence electron has higher conductivity? So that is your question. That is your that is your hypothesis. You only want to prove that by using those already available information. That is an example of analytical research. Some researchers conduct analytical research to find supporting evidence to current research that is being done in order to make the work more reliable and credible. In other words, they want to increase the confidence of the claim. Other researchers conduct analytical research to form new ideas about the topic being studied. Analytical research is conducted in a variety of ways. So that's analytical or explanatory research. The key words there is the use or the utilization of existing facts or information. Actually, it can be used in a variety of ways, including scientific trials, public opinion, literary research, and even meta-analysis. Meta-analysis is a statistical analysis that combines the results of multiple scientific studies. So, multiple scientific studies, those are facts and information that are already available. So, analytical research, in conclusion, is a very wide approach to research, while descriptive is fundamentally describing the state of affair or, or the state of matter, while analytical research is trying to connect those dots. But some research studies can be both descriptive and analytical. Applied versus fundamental. Research can either be applied or action or fundamental or basic or pure research. Applied research aims at finding a solution for an immediate problem which faces a society or even a group, group of individuals such as industry or business organization. Whereas fundamental research, fundamental research or basic research or pure research is mainly concerned with the generalizations and with the formulation of a theory. It's not concerned of any practical solution. Gathering knowledge for knowledge sake is termed pure for basic research. Research concerning some natural phenomenon or relating to pure mathematics are examples of fundamental research. Similarly, research studies concerning human behavior carried on with a view to make generalizations about how human behaves are also examples of fundamental research. I mean, how do we really behave or what are the real motivations of all our decisions? The central aim of applied research is to discover a solution for some pressing practical problem, whereas basic research is directed towards finding information that has a broad application. Examples. Does marriage prevent certain mental or physical illnesses? How can bullying be prevented in elementary schools? What changes are necessary to create jobs in rural in rural in rural areas? Is modern technology creating a dumbing down of individuals? Are there ways to prevent juvenile offenders from becoming lifelong criminals? What are the ways to mark Market products in millennials. And last but not least, how does immigration affect the economy? All these questions can be answered through applied research because these questions demand immediate resolution. Applied research is designed to solve practical problems of the modern world rather than to acquire knowledge for knowledge's sake. You might say that the goal of the applied scientist is to improve the human condition, correct? Right? These are pressing questions that need to have immediate solutions. 
It needs to have answers now. It is urgent. It's called applied for a reason because you need to apply what you already knew to find a solution to these matters. Okay, so fundamental. How did the universe begin? What are protons, neutrons, and electrons composed of? How do slime molds reproduce? What is the specific genetic code of the fruit fly? These questions are very profound. They demand a very fundamental rethinking of what we think we know. Another question, how does life evolve from biochemical reactions? Where, oh my god, that's wrong. Where do DNA get their instruction? Actually, the last two questions are mine. I just made it up. I just want to include it. Another types of research can be quantitative or quantitative or qualitative. Quantitative research is based on, you guess it, the measurement of quantity or amount, while qualitative research is concerned with quality, with phenomena relating to or involving quality or time. For instance, or for example, when we are interested in investigating the reasons for human behavior, why do people think or do certain things? Motivation research can answer these questions is important type of qualitative research. Qualitative research is especially important in the behavioral sciences, where the aim is to discover the underlying motives of human behavior. Through such research, we can analyze the various factors which motivate people to behave in a particular manner, or which make people like or dislike a particular thing, as in the case of attitude or opinion research, which is used to find out how people feel or what they think about a particular subject or institution or even issue. It may be thought that quantitative research deals with quantitative data and quality qualitative research deals with qualitative data, but that's not quite the case. In some types of quantitative research, they use quantitative analysis to some extent. I like I like qualitative research too. There are beautiful discoveries brought by qualitative research. Another types of research, conceptual or theoretical versus empirical or experimental. Conceptual research is that related to some abstract ideas or theory. It is generally used by philosophers and thinkers to develop new concepts or to reinterpret re or to reinterpret existing ones. On the other hand, empirical research relies on experience, empiricists, the empiricists, those people who rely on experiences or observation alone, with, often without due regard for system and theory. Empirical research is appropriate when proof is sought that certain variables affect other variables in some, some way, kind of like analytical or explanatory. Empirical research is data-based research. We can also call it an experimental type of research. In such a research, it is necessary to get at facts firsthand, at their source, and the researcher must first provide himself with a working hypothesis or guess for a particular problem. Then, he works to get enough facts or data to prove or disprove his hypothesis. He then sets up experimental designs which he thinks will manipulate the persons or the materials concerned so as to bring forth the desired information. Such research is therefore characterized by the experimenter's control over the variables and their study and his deliberate manipulation of one of them to study its effects. Empirical research is suitable when we want to establish connection between variables. Evidence gathered through experiments or empirical studies is considered to be the most powerful support possible for a given hypothesis. I think in engineering field, one of the most common research designs is of experimental type. We will discuss different experimental designs in the next video. You may confuse experimental or empirical research with exploratory or formulative in that they both use information or data, but in exploratory, the data are already available, all you have to do is to collect or gather them, while in experimental or empirical, the data is yet to be produced. That is, in exploratory, they use secondary data, while in experimental, they use primary data. Another main distinction between the two is that in experimental, you begin with a hypothesis, while in exploratory, you end with a working hypothesis. Okay, so those are the most popular types of research, but there are also uh, less known types of research. All other types of research are variations of one or more of the previous types of research based on either the purpose of research or the time required to accomplish research, on the environment in which the research is done, or on the basis of some other similar factor. From the point of view of time, we can think of research either as one-time research or longitudinal research. In one-time research, the, the, the research is confined to a single time period. It's done and it's finished. Whereas in longitudinal research, the research is carried on over several time periods, meaning it is continued. 
And speaking of longitudinal study, the Harvard study of adult development, for 75 years, it may be the longest study of adult life. The goal of the study was to identify predictors of healthy aging. And you want to know the answers? I provided a link below. Research can be field setting, laboratory, or simulation, depending upon the environment in which it is to be carried out. Exploratory research or formulative research. In exploratory research, as the name implies, intends merely to explore the research question. The objective of exploratory research is the development of hypotheses rather than their testing, whereas formalized or formal research studies are those with substantial structure and with specific hypotheses to be tested. So that's, those are the keywords. Exploratory or formulative, they are concerned about the development of hypotheses, whereas formal hypotheses with testing. When a research aims to gain familiarity with a phenomenon or to acquire new insight in order to formulate a more precise problem or to develop a hypothesis, exploratory study should be implied. If the theory happens to be too general or too specific where a hypothesis cannot be formulated easily, a need for an exploratory research may be realized and instituted to gain experience that may help in formulating relevant hypotheses for definite investigation. Exploratory research has the objective of clarifying the exact nature of the problem to be solved, which helps him define the problems and suggest the hypothesis. Formal research is a style of research in which data is gathered in a very controlled, structured, systematic, and objective way. Formal research is designed to have a very strict format, and it is the way in which students and academics prepare papers and studies to be peer-reviewed, critic, and possibly published in a scholarly or scientific journal. Formal research follows the protocol and methodology of the discipline. It involves learning what other researchers have already done in that area, reviewing the key ideas already known, then adding new information based on original work done by previous researchers. It is usually done in an academic or professional setting, say a physics institute or university school of medicine. Those are formal researchers. And of course, if we have formal research, we also have an informal research. Informal research is less organized and systematic. The researcher may or may not have anything in the field and the level of expertise can vary invariably. The researcher approaches the work as an interested party looking for information that will be useful in some way. The researcher may or may not have anything new or original to add to the topic. This is strange because the researcher may or may not have anything new and orig or original to add to the topic because as we previously discussed, the tenet of research is something new. The investigation into a subject Maybe only for a personal knowledge, or perhaps to use in a publication that is less scholarly in nature, such as a novel or short story, rather than a scientific journal. Or, the informal research will be for personal growth and interest only, with no publication resulting from it. Sources should still be cited, but the style in which citations are written is a matter of personal choice. Informal research is done by individuals like authors, inventors, who are studying the backgrounds of the respective areas. In other words, they don't follow a certain protocol, or, though, or they don't belong to, to a prestigious group. Primary Research versus Secondary Research Primary research is research that is collected firsthand and original to the person using it. When conducting primary research, the goal is to answer questions that have not been asked before. It can be a survey, observation, or an interview. This type of research tends to be more time-consuming and can be very, very costly. If possible, secondary research should be done first before primary research because it gives you an advantage to determine what information is not already available or what information is lacking. Secondary research involves the summary, collation, and synthesis of existing research. Secondary research is different from primary research in that primary research involves the generation of data, whereas secondary research uses primary research sources as a source of data for analysis. For example, by simply searching for a particular topic using Google search engine and making a summary of what you've found, that can be considered as secondary research. It's basically educating yourself with information that other people have worked for. It is a common practice by researchers to conduct secondary research before primary research. Common examples of secondary research include textbooks, encyclopedias, news articles, review articles, 
Secondary research is based on already published data and information gathered from other conducted studies. Secondary research is an easy place to start when starting a new research project. It can vary in credibility, though, depending on where the data is coming from and who is sharing the research. But it's important to bear in mind, making your own summary based on secondary sources can create biases and misinterpretations which can have an impact, negative impact on your research project. So those are the differences between the two. And a notable distinction of primary, primary research from secondary research is the inclusion of a methods section where the authors describe how the data was generated. We will get to it more in our future topics. So these are the other types of research and secondary research is important because it's reviewing existing body of knowledge. There is a mean for you. Mm -hmm. Personally, I, I have experienced this one, so it's important to, to remember that the very first thing to do for any researcher or students who want to study something is to explore. Explore everything that can be explored because it allows for a better understanding in what the research team's objective should be throughout the duration of a project. So in this picture, a student gets attracted to the new paper because it is more interesting than the paper that was reviewed, the paper that you have read and made a complete proposal from. This is the dilemma of undergrad students because the amount of secondary research is not enough. In our future topic, the literature review is very, very important. So these are the common types of research. There are many more types of research which are not appropriate or suitable under the area of engineering field, such as clinical research, diagnostic research, market research, and, and many more. 